Hello. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Hi, Dr. Pragya. Hi, Dr. Sharan. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Much better. Thank you. <laughs> so for everyone who don't know Dr. Pragya, she is... Please introduce yourself, actually. Um, okay. All right. Well, hi, everyone. I am Dr. Pragya Chagripati Nara. I am a consultant breast specialist and an oncoplastic surgeon. Uh, predominantly in the area of breast and I'm working in Hyderabad right now. Yeah. Also for people who don't know that she is a COVID uh, warrior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of that. The way everything is done with her. It, it was a little tricky, but yeah. I'm wearing my, I beat COVID badge and walking around everywhere. So I'm happy about that. It's done. Yeah. I'm happy you recovered. I'm happy Thank you're doing well. It, it, was, it wasn't as easy as most of the people... Yeah had it in Hyderabad, but yeah. well, nevertheless, it's over. I'm just thankful that I'm alive compared to all the others. Yeah, yeah. Plus, unfortunately. I mean, that's what our job does to us, you know. We tend to walk with a smile as if nothing has happened. You know, honestly, I don't feel bad about it at all. No matter how yeah. much, they keep asking me. They're like, are you sure you want to do this? And in yeah. fact, I actually had to go to a very close friend's party at some point of time, just like my neighbor's house. And that was the day I was diagnosed with COVID with absolutely no symptoms. The next day my symptoms started. And then what I get for this is, uh, she's a doctor. Why exactly do you invite her to parties? So that's what happens. Like, you know, yeah. that's the kind of a stigma people have against doctors nowadays. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's a, it's a very strange place. I mean, people are looking out for you in a way, but also like doesn't want to be with you in a way. It is a strange place. That's a good word you used. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As long as, I mean, they acknowledge what we do, I think that's good enough. And I don't think they even need to acknowledge it, honestly. Just don't yeah. hit doctors or beat doctors. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah this true. True. <laughs> true. So um, I'll tell you why I chose this topic, right? Um, because you already spoke about stigma and cancer is a stigma. Um, and also, it still is a mysterious disease for a lot of people. When you say cancer, um, the immediate thing they'll think is, you know, it's death. They equate cancer to death, just like how they equate HIV to death. Mm -hmm. um, so also a lot of people have their own uh, interpretations of what cancer is. If right. they have a swelling, it could be a cancer. If somebody is losing weight, it could be cancer. Uh, if you Google a symptom that loss of appetite, it shows up as cancer. Right. You know, a lot of patients who come to me with uh, anxiety disorders and somatization problems also do come saying that I've been to many doctors. Uh, th I think I have cancer, but a lot of people tell that, you know, I'm fine. So I ended up with you. Um, so <clears throat> I want you to give some basic information of what cancer is in general, right? I have some okay. set of questions, some by me and some by some of the DMs that I get. Um, first of all, um, what is cancer? Okay, so before I start that, I think someone's asking the topic for today. So today's topic that Dr. Charan chose is cancer and mental health, which I think is extremely important. Being from this generation and uh, at a time when quality of life and mental health is being propagated everywhere. So to begin your question, to answer your question, what is cancer? Well, in layman terms, let me just put it this way that all our, our, and our bodies are tuned to have a, a few cells and genes, etc., which function a certain way through, through your life. So when these, um, these cancer cells or the, the mutations, that is, they, they change to a certain extent, that could be because of anything like environmental factors, uh, in chronic inflammation or um, infections or genetic causes, that's familial causes, etc. So the slight changes in the way the normal cells actually progress and they become abnormal. And when these abnormal cells begin to multiply rampantly, that's what causes cancer in very, very simple terms. Right. Um, how did it start? I mean, you already mentioned it briefly, but how does, how does one start having this, you know, um, multiplication? Uh, there's no specific uh, re um, way that anything starts. It's like I mentioned earlier, that there has to be some sort of a mutation or a, a 
change in the normal cells to become abnormal and something is pushing that like i mentioned earlier it's something maybe for example let's take lung cancer right and that's probably because of pollution smoking so there are carcinogens there which change the function of the cells they make them abnormal and then causes cancer with regards to my particular subject of interest and what i'm working in breast cancer around 5 to 10% are because of any mutations in the uh, in genes certain genes that all of us have or sometimes dietary factors environmental factors all these are the ones that actually cause the changes and then there is uncontrolled proliferation even our immunity also it doesn't work completely it just leads to an uncontrolled multiplication of these cells and that end, ends up causing cancer so every cancer has one particular reason why it would happen but why the person develops that particular cancer it may be because of their habits and their genes the, you know their genetic profile etc but sometimes it even happens when for example some people who do not smoke end up getting lung cancer why we don't know maybe pollution but we don't have an exact idea behind that yeah yeah, yeah. um so my next question is in continuation to what you said is cancer completely genetic is it an absolutely genetic condition no no it's not complete most of the people unfortunately oh sorry let's see yeah most of the people unfortunately they think that cancer is only because someone in my family had it or someone didn't have it and only it, this is a myth that if people have cancer it has to come from the family which is a misconception completely um it, there are many many causes of cancer and sorry what was your question again i started talking about it and then i genetic i mean is it absolutely genetic so, or yeah yeah so uh, in with regards to breast cancer there are 5 to 10% are the un- that's that's the only amount attributed to breast cancer such which are because of families or hereditary whereas all the other kinds of cancers like lung prostate um you know what are the others i can mention again ovaries uterine endometrium cervical uh, breast etc they, they all are they can occur in the body because they all of us have certain number of genes right certain types of genes which sometimes if they get amplified in a certain way or mutated that is it change the change in the normal function of these genes and then they cause one particular kind of cancer for example there's something called a uh, BRCA gene this is completely an example and you don't have to really remember this but something called BRCA gene which there there are certain carriers of these genes and they any carriers will be at a high rate of risk of uh, getting breast ovarian uterine prostate melanoma etc kind of cancers right so every gene can cause certain types of cancers and that we can actually make out if the person has a huge family history like you know first and second degree relatives like your parents your siblings your grandparents if they have certain kinds then we can test them for familial kind of like what kind of a gene they it might be present, present in them which is called multi gene genetic panel testing which is being done uh, in uh, in india as well so we get that done if required and based on that we see if this person is at a high risk or not and keep them under surveillance but genetic as such is not the only cause of cancer there's so many others especially today in our country i could say we we are all turning you know beginning westernized to a certain extent so uh, in terms of that I, i i would attribute most of the cancers to lifestyle and environment and so many other reasons besides familial yeah you see that i see a very um, uncanny resemblance in the causation of neuropsychiatric conditions and cancer in terms of there is genetic predisposition but that's that's not it there should right. be some environmental factors as well it could be a substance use it could be a trauma but not in cancer um, like a mental trauma in psychiatry right. uh, so i see i see some resemblance so you saying mental trauma also causes um, cancers of the brain no 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 um uh, psychiatric problems psychiatric yes 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 of course yeah like how cancer and uh, psychiatry diseases have like this dual hit hypothesis right where genetic vulnerability on top of it environmental uh, or lifestyle changes etc right right right, right. Um, yeah the prevalence of the cancer when you talk about it i don't need the rates because i mean we don't need epidemiology here but um is it mostly in the developed countries or developing countries on a broad 
perspective overall what kind of cancers again change changes that demographic right so developed countries have certain types of cancers which are more prevalent than developing countries which are more prevalent prevalent for certain types of cancers um developed countries have a high rate of breast or ovarian cancers whereas developing countries like us they have we have a high rate of lung cancers oral cancers because of you know maybe smoking or chewing tobacco etc so we can't really say that it's only the developed countries which who, who have this cancers like you know multiple cancers in their society it's it's a bit of both and what kind is very very different again and the more than cancers i think it's it's in the west and most of the other countries it's more of uh, non cancerous diseases that kill them like obesity and you know heart diseases and stuff and cancers do kill indians quite a lot nowadays and the statistics are quite alarming the rate at which they're increasing unfortunately yeah um what i mean i know individual cancer has a specific prevalence rate but if you had to say like out of 100 what 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 could be the prevalence so what kinds of cancers oh um, that's what i mean um individually there is like if you take 100 out of 100 like let's just say 5% or is a cancer rate or 10% is a cancer so rate so i don't know the numbers wise but i was reading something mm-hmm. earlier which says that at least 30% of the population will have a cancer at some point in their lives so it's an indirect answer to your question but um yeah so any it can affect anybody honestly there's yeah. no specific reason behind that but 30% are affected according to the latest census yeah because when when someone speaks about cancer they say that but none of my family members have cancer why did i get but yeah. I, you are you already answered that it doesn't yeah. have to be genetic yeah that's a very common commonly asked questions now can like why did i get cancer like you know i don't have any bad habits i don't have this so it's really you can't really pinpoint to one particular reason mm-hmm. as to why they have cancer unfortunately and that puts it puts us at like you know we're just quite in front of the patient like we don't know where you got it yeah so it's not the best feeling <laughs> <laughs> some people even think that cancer is contagious or it spreads between like spouse you think so Maybe. myth 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 alert yeah oh my gosh yes myth alert seriously it's such a misconception because to the definition if you actually if you if you go into theory and the reason why we get cancer is because of your own body there is uncontrolled cell multiplication in your own body so how can that go to another person just by touching the other person it mm-hmm. does not happen what but uh, but there is an exception to this uh when sometimes when you do any organ transplants right and that person whose organs we are harvesting already had a cancer although all precautions are generally taken when the when the organ is being harvested um preoperatively and intraoperatively these kind of patients sometimes do end up getting they might develop cancer in the future so organ transplant is the only exception to this rule and that's also pretty rare yeah yeah i'm glad you mentioned that because uh, you know how it can be translated right anybody who is going through organ transplant people might think that can end up having cancer yeah it's it's a rare complication which does happen but uh, it does not mean that you should donate your organs and you should not opt for transplants because that is what saves a lot of people today but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. not um, the other <laughs> I know every again every cancer has specific symptoms, but what are the general symptoms of any cancer? Because when people Google loss of weight, it says cancer. I have actually never read that loss of weight meaning cancer directly. Ah, uh, but and mm. your your question is way too broad to answer. But let me put it this way: um, yeah. every mm. cancer has a different, um, you know, pr- uh, kind of symptom at presentation. what happens is in the advanced stages of any kind of cancer is when your symptoms that you just men- mentioned right uh, loss of weight uh, loss of appetite tiredness fatigueability exhaustion like all these symptoms end up um, in advanced stages of cancer relative to early stages and early stages obviously have different kinds of symptoms as per you know the kind of cancer they're affected with unfortunately let's say lung cough and like breathlessness etc but even that you really can't make out in the early stages half the time it only ends up in the later stages um and then there's something called oral oral mucosa cancer right you end up with ulcers and bleeding etc 
which is uh, and then your tiredness appetite loss etc comes only in the later stages breast cancer obviously the lumps and the discharge etc again different signs and symptoms for breast cancer but um again the advanced stages you have all these other symptoms such as appetite loss fatigue ability tiredness etc uh, pradya pradya one second i i think there is net sorry sorry i think there is network problem you are freezing yeah sorry i mean there was there was some network issue yeah it's 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 better now so you spoke about the symptoms in the early stages this is better now stages yeah i don't know when i got cut off but late stages are basically there's no like if you have a cancer it doesn't mean there's certain kinds of symptoms mm -hmm. it completely depends on what kind of a cancer and what stage of cancer you are at and also your uh, ability to overcome that kind of cancer all symptoms are very very variable depending and they're all individualized so i wouldn't say they're like these symptoms of cancer and google saying loss of weight is cancer is is no, it it's, is. it's just a scary it scary is. thought for a lot um, of people because uh, some people get di diagnosed with cancer at let's just say third stage i'm talking in terms of layman stages 1 2 3 i'm not talking tnm right uh, some people can get diagnosed in uh, maybe first stage it could be an incidental finding or it could be um, you know for you are doing routine investigation for something else is there a way is there regular screening um we we'll talk about breast cancer right just to be uh, keep it simple for people to understand is there a regular way to screen yourself at, at a frequent intervals to probably diagnose it early yes yeah. yes um again the two ways to look look at this um then there's something called a high risk population and there's something called an average risk yeah. population right so today you might be at an average risk because you have no family history or anything that puts you at a higher risk and i might be at a high risk maybe because i have a family history of any kind of cancer now the way you screen is very different the way i screen is very different and for an average risk per it would for breast cancer yes screening is very very important again you start with the mammogram at the age of 40 and then you go for an annual mammogram so you can detect early breast cancers and that's the only way we can give a good um life span to the person in breast cancer because um later stages obviously have a poor prognosis the same way if you have a family history of any kind of cancers like maybe you're at a higher risk of um getting endometrial cancer or lung cancer or prostate cancer based on why you're at a higher risk is it because of a gene that's present or because of something that you've been diagnosed some symptoms that you've had based on what it is everyone would be put on different kinds of screening but high risk as such has to be screened a lot more with other different kinds of modalities compared to anyone at an average risk so yes yeah, screening does it's it's very very important obviously most of these screening techniques in india with regards to breast cancer such as mammogram cannot be government regulated uh for example in the us and uk they send letters home saying this is your data for mammogram please come back and get a mammogram so it reminds them at one point right but unfortunately that can't happen in india because well most this because of probably the resources the illiteracy rates people not complying to it so it's just campaigns and awareness talks and etc which will actually bring people yeah, and i'm glad it. you're doing very but active job on the, uh, breast cancer awareness um uh, I know because uh, recently there is suddenly so much mm -hmm. rise in the prevalence, I believe, and also um, every routine screening. Like if you have like a, if you go to a, if you go to like a super specialty hospital, even the regular screening packages have included Pap smear and uh, mammograph as part, which was not there before earlier. So I mean, that's a good thing in a way, and also. yeah also for, for also you know, for people who want to know more sorry, about the uh, self examination complete, and complete. also uh, what is the regular screening as in like what is the freak, uh, what intervals you should do it please check out dr pragnya's page i think she is actively doing a uh, talk about something called as breast intentions i've been following your page you know you're doing pretty good job <laughs> yeah 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 please go ahead awesome that's it so um like you were saying about talking about screening yes obviously it's a very very important step and uh what's happening right now is i would 
so obviously we we're, we're still like just in there i'm talking exclusively about hyderabad right now i'm not talking about the rest of the country uh in hyderabad i wouldn't take any credit for uh, awareness at this point in time i want to do a lot more but there are a lot of doctors who have done a lot for this um breast awareness campaigns and not not only doctors lots of these breast cancer survivors volunteers and organizations i think there has been an impetus towards starting like you know awareness has increased people are examining themselves people are coming for mammograms themselves but then again this is semi rural to uh, urban areas what happens to the rural areas is something that we have to there i have a couple of friends also who go to these rural areas and then they start um, you know these small campaigns and small lectures in the language that they can comprehend and um, so it's increasing in, in in a few ways about cancers about menstrual hygiene there are a lot of topics that they people from urban india like you know the educated people are going and taking it upon themselves and trying to make a difference so i think that has changed tremendously over the maybe the previous decade also unfortunately obviously because of covid at this point they're not doing anything much but maybe once it goes down that's the reason i started breast intentions was because i i could see a lot of people they're scared to get out of their homes and uh, they they just stop examining themselves and they own every symptom they attributed to covid so it's it's not they, they they're not finding it they're not ben- benefiting from it in any way um so which is why i started this so, so they can understand whatever um you know symptoms they have and if they do find something abnormal they can just reach out to a doctor at least do a video consult instead of ignoring it for we don't even know when this covid is going to end right ignoring it until covid ends or until they get the vaccine and by that time it might be just very very advanced so i really hope it doesn't i, I really hope yeah. that my web series helps even like one or two people to a certain extent no 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 i am with That'll you on be that because you know my um, um contribution my i guess the same. sometimes i wonder that why aren't my followers increasing as much instead of me doing good work but then i realize that people who want to reach uh, people who want to understand about the mental health they are already following so it's not about the number of people who follow at the end of the day one or two people are helped i think that's good enough you know some good it it doesn't matter like you know uh, followers or anything i know yeah. people just starve for yeah. get, you know to get more followers but that's not the whole point right like you mentioned yeah. even if it helps like a very very small number of people that the, the fact that there you have around 1270 or some some followers that i was just looking at yeah. all these people are probably someone who's actually very very interested in what you're doing how many all the other people do they care about mental health nobody because as you said cancer is stigma mental health is stigma and um with the entire deepika padukone mental health for, you know campaign yeah. and so many other people doing it i feel like it ha- it is increasing slowly people are focused on mental health coming out it is yeah. going to psychiatrists also so, you know the when you talk about stigma right well. i i still know when patients come to us and we write some blood investigations and we say that um why don't you go for the package because you know that includes a lot more things for probably cheaper price um they always i mean uh, uh, tell me that can we exclude mammogram and uh, pap smear especially pap smear can we switch it up with like let's just say an ultrasound of abdomen or maybe a ct brain when i tell them you know what is the reason they say that you know nobody in my family has cancer like i'm fine i'm a healthy fertile uh, uh, uh women and i'm not comfortable with pap smear and also the whole ma- i don't want to expose my uh, my breast for whatever you know for mammogram so uh this is educated patient by the way this is not like somebody from the rural so even in um, rural uh, semi rural and urban lot more awareness has to be done um be- good thing about you and me we are young and we have we are also tech savvy in a way where we can actually reach out in <laughs> technology let's not <laughs> technology at all this is like the most basic stuff i will do no i mean tech savvy for doctors you know, is different from tech savvy for the world <laughs> so i think we are good for <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah um sorry did i interrupt you Wait. no no so i have a couple more questions um is there a vaccine no, 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 for cancer it. okay that's a good question again um so is there a vaccine for cancer there are a few very very few for uh, prostate cancer advanced prostate cancer 
um, an advanced um, melanoma, I'm guessing. But um, there's nothing that we use at this point of time that will prevent you from getting this kind of a cancer. But um, again, the, the, the certain organisms or like certain causes of ca cervical cancer, cervical anal cancer, throat cancer, etc., which is the HPV vaccine, right? So human papilloma virus. So immunizing the girl or like or the guy at a younger age um, in like late childhood or young adults does prevent, um, you know, us from getting that cancer from this factor, this virus, the same way hepatitis B vaccine prevents us from getting liver cancer as such, right? So these, uh, they help us prevent, but they don't go and attack the cancer cells and kill them. We are very, very far away from actually getting cancers um, to kill the cancer cells in our body because ultimately we have to introduce the entire concept of a vaccine is to introduce a small component of the cancer mm. or the virus into your system so our body's immunity will start fighting against them. So there's something called autologous cancers and then allogenic cancers. There are a couple of different concepts that are all working on them but today we don't have any particular uh, vaccine that we can use against like to prevent cancers as such. So, But I'm really hoping some yeah. genius gets some, some sort of vaccines, especially for those at high risk, because it would definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, even for us, it makes anxiety. our job much easier. A lot of and, anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. You know, why do why don't you guys, like, you know, get a vaccine? I'm like, how? Like, you know, people you know, ask me the what, same what way, like question? when I said I depression is because them. of decrease in serotonin in brain, they're like, then why don't you inject me serotonin? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it's that easy. Like, I'm not saving it for something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then how this I world will be out of depression. And the most important question, Pregna, uh, can cancer be cured? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. Early stage cancers can be cured and uh, with a good follow up, you'll have like a good survival as well. Uh, but which is why early detection is very, very important. And um, most of them with advances, they are getting better by the day, the cure, uh, you know, the treatments and um, the curative rates as such are getting better. And today with early breast cancer, I'm talking again about breast right now. Today with early breast cancer, uh, there are about like 90 to 99 percent of them who survive around five years at least minimum um, and then most of them do much much better and um, with obviously with late uh, late stages or advanced cases of breast cancer obviously you don't have that kind of survival um, and in India as such unfortunately most of the women even till date are presenting to us with late stage breast cancers so that's turning out to be um, you know, we're not able to give the same kind of prognosis as the West or the other countries, unfortunately. But to answer your question yeah. straight up, yes. But, but it doesn't mean still late stage equals early stage. You can still, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm. Late stage, so ca getting cancer does not mean your life is over. Yes, obviously it is. It's, it's, it's quite, a, uh, it's, it's sad. It's quite a different um, life that you will have to go through after that, but it does not mean yeah, you're dead. You still true, have true, true. your life in your hands um, to do anything what, you want to. What are the so-called stages of cancer? Mm -hmm. People say, I'm in the final stage or terminal stage, or I'm in the early stage or in the moderate stage. So uh, uh, stages of cancer change um, for every single kind of tumor, right? Um, for lung cancer, there are different kinds depending on where it spreads. Now, advanced stages are, uh, let's just say, when it's so advanced that it's either spread to different parts of your body or it might be so advanced that you really can't operate uh, without causing an equal amount of disability or like, you know, uh, not causing massive damage. You have to weigh the risks against the benefits. And so advanced stages will be stage three or stage four. And um, so obviously the prognosis at that point will be pretty bad. Um, but the early stages are the st stages when you just start the symptoms, when there's very minimal involvement of the organ that's involved. And obviously the prognosis is much better. For in cases of lung or prostate especially, or breast also, um, melanoma and cervical cancer, it depends completely. The, the treatment that is offered to them is also very minimal today. Um, and follow-up follow mm. is very, very important. Now, again, the unfortunate thing in India is that people don't come for follow-ups. They're like, fine, I'm done with this. And 
we don't go through every part of the treatment some people just come for surgery and then they're like fine you remove my mask now why exactly should i come back for chemo or radiotherapy again that's something that has to be embedded that it's a systemic disease and the system needs to be treated as well so i guess it's just about how the doctor speaks to the patient gets it into their head that yeah i mean it's important that the doctor communicates well and the patient puts on that. trust into the doctor uh, don't have this um, bias that you know probably they're calling us so you know they can make more money uh, don't have that bias you know you can always know i mean i'm not saying no one does that but some some doctors do that but at least you'll know the intention of the doctor if it's good intention or not if you always have doubts you can always get a second opinion there's nothing wrong with that i tell my yeah yeah i believe it's a very important actually i believe opinions are very very important because sometimes i push my patients and i go ahead take a second opinion and then come back to me if you want me that's it and i'm just starting off my i'm still open about that you go to a senior doctor if you want i think it's very very important that you even yeah. give them a sort of satisfaction saying i'm not messing around with their kind of treatment and um so i actually push them and on my yeah. website i'm actually mm-hmm. going to put up a little thing saying go ahead for second yeah. opinions if yeah. you want of course if you want go ahead. i think you should be very very open about before that before i miss them um do women in india get offered hpv vaccination Yes, they do, Sangeeta. They do get offered um, HPV vaccines at a very, very young age, um, and even like in young adults. Some patients well. do not have a family history and still get breast and cervical cancer at a very young age. How much does emotional and mental stress play a role in it? Yeah, no. Um, I don't think so. Like That's emotional and mental stress did it cause us cancer? I don't think so. That could be like a triggering factor, maybe. It's not a causative factor for sure. Just because I'm stressed, I won't have a cancer. This is one area where stress is not a big, significant role, unlike hypertension or cardiac Basically, problems, stroke, etc., etc. Right. I I agree with that. But to add to that, I I believe that stress or trauma or anything that happens to you, it just releases all these kind of inflammatory markers in your system. and those go and if it is constant stress and this constant inflammation with these markers those are the ones that might end up causing cancer at a very very late stage obviously if you know if you stress start on one day obviously not going to get cancer but it's a chronic 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 you know if it happens for a long period of time that could be there's no evidence at this moment saying stress causes breast cancer but then yeah uh, there is there are studies which say that um not being stressed out and um being positive and having a positive attitude and optimistic about life it it is more beneficial and it improves the survival also of the patient there are a few studies obviously not like randomized control trials or something that yeah, we need 100%. today but there are you know positive reinforcement is very yeah. very important um what are the various treatment modalities when you look mm-hmm. at cancer Okay so um when a person has cancer again depending on the kind of um um depending on the kind of um cancer that you have you the different types again so there's surgery um the chemotherapy there's radiotherapy chemotherapy is basically injecting some drugs into your system uh, which are, which goes around the entire body and protects your body again or kills the cancer cells um and unfortunately the growing cells as well the normal cells because it can't differentiate between both of them the second is um radiotherapy which is basically ex- low dose x rays that are directed at the tumor where it is in the body and then there's something called targeted therapy which is basically whatever is making this uh, tumor multiply uh, we target that particular drug and give the therapy and nowadays immu- immunotherapy is coming in uh, there are a few kinds of cancers which um immunotherapy is given in, in like you know as a regular protocol provided the person can afford it um so immunotherapy is another kind of uh, treatment it completely depends on what kind of cancer you have and endocrine therapy which is again very important in breast cancer again whatever is making yeah. the tumor so multiply you're targeting cancer, that in, in who is the doctor treatment. that they go to for evaluation they oncologists they're called oncologists and um if anyone has a cancer i would not say that general surgeons are under experience just because they don't have a degree i would not say that at all they're very very um capable people to perform good 
uh, clearances and good they give good advice and follow up as well but i would say um experience wise there are surgical, surgical oncologists go through rigorous training in particular only cancer alone so i think they would be a little more trained and nowadays everything is becoming so organ specific um like you know gi becomes only gi cancers uh, breast is only breast cancer like you know we tr- take so much training in only that particular kind of cancer so we understand the up- updates that are happening and give the patient the best kind of treatment but it does not negate a general surgeon or um, no, we, you know they should and we should not surgical true, oncologist but, 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 I mean, in any way my personal opinion it's, is like uh, i would go to an oncologist yes i agree but sometimes uh, the unfortunate thing is that um, in my field of course in my field right now if there's just a lump it could be benign for all you know right and you don't know whom to go to general surgeon not know the onco- or, you know the reconstructive mm-hmm. techniques or the oncoplastic incisions to make in a breast especially in a young woman yeah. so general surgeon might not be the best idea at that point not that they're bad again and at the same time it it adds to the stress and stigma of a cancer uh, it, if you go to an oncologist if you go to an oncologist you know you'll have the thing at the back of your head saying oh my god i'm going to an oncologist so that's where i feel like uh, specialist in per put in one particular field will help and which is why i pursued breast special breast as such because in this city if even if i have any yeah. breast issues i don't know whom to go to i don't want to go to an oncologist because i don't have a cancer so i think in that field I, it has to be like yeah. a little more so, narrow so um uh, what else do you deal with do you only deal with breast cancers because people again think because you're a breast oncoplastic surgeon only if they have cancer they should come to you but you also treat other conditions what are they yeah so i do benign cases as well obviously like non cancerous cases breast cancer obviously um then cosmetic uh, the cosmetic augmentation that's increasing the size of the breast or reducing the size of the breast um and what else uh, liposuctions for like you know getting a proper shape of the breast but all this is also only because to improve the cosmesis so basically it's the cosmetic aspects the cancerous aspects and benign aspects and anyone who don't just have symptoms and no lump or anything also yeah i mean that's good that's good to, that's good to know because a lot of people so think it's only cancer with an onco you know onco surgeon is like <laughs> Yeah. Um yeah. I think one last question before we yeah. wrap up. Uh yeah. what about yeah. uh chances of relapse or recurrence? It again depends on the stage you're presenting, the biology of the tumor, which organ is involved. Um based on that and the kind of treatment you receive, if you follow through to you know to the end of the treatment suggested by your doctor, the center you go to, the kind of updates your doctor is giving uh, the treatments fr- from um it, there are a lot of factors that are involved but obviously the biology of the tumor age of the patient are very very important yeah. and the kind of treatment that they receive is also equally important it and nowadays cure rates are um with the recent advances i think cancers are curable if presented in an early stage so relapse rates do ha- re- relapses do occur but they can happen and sometimes they don't occur either so it completely depends you know it's, something it's happened in the last one month um, um with my follow yeah. with my uh, references i'm seeing a um, lot of cancer patients people who are undergoing treatment uh, they are being presented for either loss of appetite or somebody with depression or somebody with just uh, fatigue or somebody who is um asking to be euthanized because like they don't want to go through the the treatment itself not because treatment is bad or anything but in their head they think that oh like like you lose hair you become thin and you know how cancer patients are shown in movies right i mean the movies also stigmatize these conditions right so this 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 person was telling his family that you know i will start distributing my property and i want to be euthanized like give me some medicines in fact the patient asked me to give him some let's say sleeping pills or something you know to put him off to sleep forever um so i thought um suddenly i'm seeing spike in these patients not cancer but patients who are cancer and coming to me for reference um so i went and checked about like you know what are the depression rates in cancer patients you know what are the anxiety rates in cancer patients i'm talking about clinical depression and clinical anxiety not not that i'm feeling anxious not that i'm feeling sad that everybody would right it's um 50% 50% and 68 50% clinical depression 62% clinical anxiety that is alarming for me sorry 
that's yeah in in if you take in like 100 100 cancer patients with cancer the person of them can, can have clinical depression they're usually un- sorry I yeah i mean yeah. i guess that you come in you you know we have that their counsel you know that's one important thing that i learned in my training uh, in uk the the um, not that we are bad obviously not but our case loads are so high that we probably don't give enough time to each patient but you have to make sure that any patient who is being diagnosed with cancer has to be uh, sat down with um explained it you know explained the diagnosis first let them go home and obviously having like a loved one right beside him or her obviously does help but let them go home let them digest the fact that there's something going wrong and then obviously google comes into the picture but they need to accept the fact that cancer and then you bring them back to you and that's when you again explain all the modalities of treatment Process. and where, what stage it is at you have to give them time to like you know take it in and on process it and again at the end of the session once you understand once they understand what they have to go through having a counselor is so 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 important and then in my field again there's something called breast care nurses right so they they take the patient away and they have a rapport with the patient from the beginning to the end of the treatment while they explain the diagnosis again and then they give their number and then they make sure any point of anxiety they hit them up so at every step along the way from diagnosis treatment till the end of treatment and follow up you need the counselor and that the, the the patient should be comfortable enough to have a source to talk to regarding anything that makes them anxious obviously having family around and having strong support of family is very very important as well but uh, what we lack in in today's day and age in india as such are having good counselor um to sit and talk to explain the pros and cons and, and like you know even doctors also we like yeah. you know surgeons or medical oncologists or anyone they have to sit and give them that time if you can't you know there's no way we can overcome this in any way i think that's very very important and that's what we are looking at so right now i'm trying to find a good counselor yeah. who can sit with the patients in my opd and that's that's again a step by step process yeah. it has to go it it only ends once the counseling is done without that then especially once getting a mastectomy because they have to understand the pros and cons of not having a breast at the end of the day the kind of chemotherapy you're taking what are the side effects that happen there's so many yeah. things that have to be focused on besides so, just uh, even the now, um, you know how Sentence cancer affects multiple areas of your life not just physical health mental health in terms of your relationship between um, um, you know your spouse your children your job you know professionally probably you're not doing as well also the intimacy is gone between um, a couple um, body image issues right anxiety depression yeah yeah like every area it is seeping yeah. into i feel very, like very. um the treatment for cancer is evolving so much but the stigma is also like somewhere like deepening i feel like i think that should be taken care so the counselors should even um uh, explain obviously you know count you should train counselors when we're, we're talking about clinical psychologists you know comes into the picture should explain them you know this cancer that is the relapse because counselors also are not medical doctors right they can say like whatever they from their personal experience they can draw things and say so um i suggest that everybody gets a psychiatric evaluation and uh, see if it's clinical depression probably having medications is also a good idea and counseling is must anyways it's ongoing process because a lot of symptoms of depression and cancer they match so you as an oncologist if you're seeing your patient um uh, let's just say is feeling very tired right not having much appetite am i stressing too much on the word appetite is it actually such a big symptom right so no it is abdominal cancer is loss of appetite is very very normal It's even yeah. like you know when you're getting treatment also you yeah. lose your appetite because of the drug that you're getting or just the anxiety that Yeah exactly so uh, some, some of the symptoms do match with uh, what are the symptoms of this. depression in fact when we were studying about depression in our like in, in our college one of the differential diagnoses is cancer <laughs> like carcinoma is like definitely a rule out you know like uh, hyperthyroid cancer <laughs> is what we read like yeah yeah Right. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Right. Obviously, no, it's more endless. So, yes. Also, I think being uncertain about yeah. what treatment is going to be and what future holds for them is also very important. Also, in terms of finances, 
is it going to drain them off or do they have insurance just a question does insurance cover uh, uh, cancer they do right yeah they do it again yeah. kind of insurance and where it comes yeah. into private okay. that's good to know for people who are yeah. thinking you but know, yeah it does it could be a drain or something like that it's it's rampant in uk it's amazing how cancers are completely covered by the nhs so yeah i hope we get to that stage at some point we have we have rrb yeah. that's doing it uh, it depends on the hospital you go to obviously and so the government is really good for the scope and improvement well. even like uh, uh, when when patient with psychiatric problem comes and if a point alcohol abuse insurance rejects them because they they see alcohol as a habit not a disease so i tell them you know i yeah. I, i argue with my insurers they like you know but it's a dependence it's a it's illness why don't you cover it they're like but it's he only has done it to himself so why should we cover <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah but uh, I'm, I'm sometimes sure they do cover but i mean say alcohol yeah. or nicotine like absolutely like they, no claim yeah Yeah I think that brings us to the end of the session yeah, we covered yeah, pretty much a yeah. lot of things um again like because it is also about mental health definitely family support is very very important like you already mentioned you know all through the process having a counselor is important sometimes even we psychiatrists unfortunately won't have time because of again heavy case load um so like i get referral that you know refer refer the patient for counseling then i'm like okay i only have 15 minutes with the patient <laughs> no what can i counsel much you know i i send them to a clinical uh, psychologist i evaluate them if medicines are required but you know there are many a psychiatrist who does um, counseling right. as well um uh, so yeah that's about it thank you dr pragna uh, yeah it seriously mental health i think is very very important um to be focused on absolutely and um yeah keep it up let's try to do this on like a bigger scale and make sure we yeah. propagate the entire concept of like you know mental health and strength yeah. and you know it's going on in this country thank you for this. being on my page so good luck with that. i mean thank it, you for this is the first time uh, me and dr pragna are chatting it felt like like it felt like we're friends and we know each other that's a good thing <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I'm seeing great. I'm seeing That's very great. questions. No people are you. saying hi and thank you and good job. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. You too. You too. Bye. Stay safe. Take care. So guys, that is Dr. Pragna. Um she explained a lot about cancer today um if if you are not going through it at least you know somebody that you know might be going through it please you know ask them to see the video or you explain the facts to them that's the whole purpose you know we both have the common intention that you know our voice should reach the places that doesn't have internet and um uh, 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 like instagram accounts you know i mean you all are educated people so probably healthy hopefully healthy so you might not need it as much as other people need it so please spread the word don't let people just google and you know get their own assessment we have qualified doctors you know who we we, we study this for like 10 years to 15 years not not one two years so you can trust us with what we're saying um also check out dr pragna's page um she's doing pretty awesome work um even though she says that she's not tech savvy i think she's doing a great job um also next wednesday we won't be having a talk because i have a personal work so next week's talk we'll be doing on monday uh which is another fantastic topic with uh, another doctor uh so tune in next week i hope all of you are stay safe, staying safe thank you thank you i'm so glad that you 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 you're loving this thank you bye